Hello, Out Entrepreneurs. Rhodes Perry here, and welcome to episode number 16 of The Out Entrepreneur, a weekly podcast where I get to interview today's most inspiring LGBTQ bosses crushing it in business. Today, I am really thrilled to be interviewing the brilliant Ajay Bam, a fellow outboss who I met through the Start Out Network, which is a vibrant online community dedicated to LGBTQ entrepreneurs and our supporters. So Ajay, are you ready to inspire fellow outbosses? Absolutely, I am ready. Well, thank you so much for being here. I am really excited to have you. Uh, you are an accomplished serial entrepreneur, an educator, and an innovator with 13 plus years of experience building startups with successful exits and launching products with world-class brands in areas of e-commerce, digital payments, and mobile marketing. Ajay, you're currently serving as the co-founder and CEO of Viral.com, a UC Berkeley founded and funded startup that helps consumer brands make sense of user and brand generated video content through a user friendly dashboard, which supports product marketing. Ajay, you're a lecturer of entrepreneurship at the Haas School of Business at UC Berkeley, and you mentor startup founders in, in your spare time, and you speak German, French, and Hindi. So you are a very busy guy and clearly very accomplished. We are so lucky to have you on the show. So um, just really quickly, if you could just fill in some of the gaps of, of your bio and, and let us know what makes your business unique. Yeah, so absolutely. So uh, uh, so I founded Viral about uh, two years ago. And the reason I started the company is I've always, as an entrepreneur, I've focused on solving big problems. And one of the challenges that we have now in the uh, in the marketing world, if you will, or, or social media marketing world is that, uh, you know, 10 years ago, a lot of video content, online video content was uh, brand generated. Uh, today, more than 90 percent of video content on social media and web is user generated. So a lot of brands are actually struggling with trying to figure out, you know, who's creating the content, what are they saying about their products inside the video, uh, who and what product is featured inside the video. And really, they, they're, they're more interested in like a deeper analysis of the video content. And, and the reason they want to do that is they want to really you leverage all that to improve their customer service, to improve their products. Uh, and really, they want to leverage all the user generated content uh, in good ways to really create more brand love. Uh, and eventually product sales. So they really want to engage customers deeper with videos. And that's really where uh, Viral comes in. So what Viral does is uh, we help consumer brands uh, make sense of all the user-generated and brand-generated video content and really leverage that for um, product marketing and, and more. So what really makes us very unique is that our platform is built on uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence technology uh, that we have developed, uh, which we use to deep dive into uh, videos and what videos are all about. So what's very unique is, let's say, um, you know, I'll give you an example. A company like BMW has over uh, 20 million videos on YouTube alone. And today, BMW has no way to really sort through all that content by product, product category, uh, or brand or competition. So BMW might want to know, you know, what's happening with Tesla and all that, right? So essentially what Viral does is that we're actually able to uh, capture uh, video content and really match uh, people and products inside the video uh, to a pr at product level. So, so we can actually, for BMW, if they just launch a new BMW Model XYZ, uh, we can actually, through our dashboard, show them all the videos by individual model, or they might want to look up the, the all the video content by product or an influencer or creator. So we actually categorize uh, influencers as fans, experts, press, and more. So we find we do product to video matching. Uh, we actually are auto, we can automatically tie a video to a buy button and product information as well. And then we also are able to tag who created the content and what the content is all about. So that's really, in nutshell, uh, we offer a one-stop dashboard uh, for brands and retailers and marketing agencies uh, to dig through all the video analytics and do all content marketing across multiple platforms, You know, everything from YouTube to Instagram to one dashboard. So that's really what we do. Wow. And it's, we're it's, with <laughs> brands. I mean, that's that's very very comprehensive, and it's clear that you're you're doing a ton. Uh, you have 13 plus years of experience building startups, and in this entrepreneurial world, I'm just curious right now, what is the one thing that has you most inspired about your business today? What I really what's what's really very cool about my business is that you know it's all about timing. 
uh, you know, if I started this company, uh, you know, six years ago or even eight years ago, we've not had a product market fit. So what's happened in the last five years is that, you know, with the smartphones getting better or the cameras on smartphones getting better, uh, there's a huge, explo massive explosion of video content. So I think as an entrepreneur, I want to solve this problem around videos and having that product market fit and, and being at the right time in the right place is very important. And, and I think uh, and I think that's where we are. And, and I also believe that, you know, now finally the, the area of machine learning and artificial intelligence, intelligence has actually come together. Uh, it's coming together really well where we can actually use some of these technologies uh, to programmatically solve big problems. Technology is constantly changing. So as you're forward thinking and thinking about the future, I'm asking you to take a, a look back and, and think about when you first started thinking about the entrepreneurial path. For many of us, especially for LGBT bosses, it seems like we arrived at starting our businesses for one of two reasons. The first is we either felt a calling to pursue a purpose-driven idea, and the second is we felt the need that we could no longer conform to a workplace culture that didn't value who we are. And I'm curious, you know, as you look back, which one of these two reasons resonates the most with you? Yeah, so, you know, uh, uh, to be honest with you, I come from a very entrepreneurial family uh, back in India, and I've been in the U.S. for about more than 23 years. And my father is a very successful uh, textile entrepreneur in India. So growing up, uh, the value system in our house was always that you got to be your own boss and not work for one. My dad said always, you know, you know, own Intel, don't work for Intel, you know, the big company, right? So I believe entrepreneurship is, is like a value system and it's like a disease that can be passed around. And I'm just very fortunate that I grew up with that value and ecosystem in my house. And I will say that my first inspiration really came from my dad. I think I think just to see him, uh, you know, I, I saw him go from, you know, from uh, from one to uh, to millions and uh, to see my dad build that and really take ownership and pride in that was something I grew up with. And, you know, I didn't I didn't jump into the entrepreneurial journey like right after uh, graduation. What I wanted to do first was really get some experience, industry experience. So my first job after my uh, master's was uh, uh, actually in computer science was uh, working on Wall Street with Lehman Brothers. So uh, so my entrepreneurial journey is a little bit different. You know, I really wanted to get some experience. I think you know, you need to know what's on the other side before you become the boss. Mm -hmm. And you need to you need to see what works and what doesn't work. You know, you really wouldn't know, you know, if I hadn't joined Lehman, I would not have known what what the LGBTQ culture at, at Wall Street is or was then. This was in, in uh, late 90s. Right. So so I, I gained some um, industry experience before starting my first uh, company. And so what I did was after Lehman, I went to business school. I went to Babson, which is known for its uh, Babson College in the Boston area, which is known for its entrepreneurship program. And that's where I really started my first company. And I think what what really the school what Babson did for me uh, was provided the mentorship, the leadership, the connections and eventually the funding to really get me started. And I, and I think you know, the way I think of, of starting an entrepreneurial journey is that, you know, always surround yourself with amazing people and they will help you get there. Absolutely. You are the average of the five people that you're around the most. So I think that's great advice. And also, you know, just kind of highlighting what you had mentioned about getting industry experience, understanding the employee mentality before jumping into the waters of being your own boss absolutely makes you more effective at one, running your own business and kind of thinking about the culture that you want to set and also thinking about how you want to treat your own, your own talent. So I want to switch gears just a little bit and focus in on leveraging your identity. So in thinking about when you took that first entrepreneurial leap, you, you left kind of the world of Wall Street and you set out on being your own boss. Did being LGBTQ influence your journey to become your own boss? Was that a factor for you? Well, I think, you know, in 90s at that time, you know, Wall Street wasn't LGBT friendly. And it's amazing to see how much, you know, I was at Lehman Brothers around 97, 98 time frame. And it's quite amazing to see how much Wall Street has changed. I mean, now you're actually beginning to see leadership coming about in LGBTQ uh, with Goldman Sachs and some of these companies, and they're becoming more open. And that's and I think partly is dictated by the market, because that's what the the millennials are demanding now is is they're demanding equality for all. So I think I think at that time, you know, I think even like at, in Wall Street, I hadn't come out uh, to my colleagues. 
And in some ways, you know, I think, you know, being LGBTQ, I think I realized that if I wanted to uh, create a better place or a better workplace uh, for people like myself, uh, the best way to start that is do it yourself. So I think, you know, I, I firmly believe that, uh, you know, you have to execute versus talk. Uh, you know, I'll give you an example. Right now at Viral, you know, our team is very diverse. We have, you know, we have two LGBT um, on our team. Uh, you know, most of our engineers are actually women. And, you know, we made a very conscious decision here in, in uh, San Francisco. You know, there's a lot of talk about uh, adding diversity. But, you know, as you know, as we were saying before, you know, a lot of these big companies, they want to make an effort. And, uh, you know, I, I think I think in order to make that effort, you just have to do it. So we for early on, uh, you know, me and my co-founder, Dr. Barbara Rosario, who I actually met at UC Berkeley, uh, you know, we're, we're a good fit. But we also made a very conscious decision that, you know, we would have 50-50 on our team. What I meant is 50-50 gender equality. And also we would be a very diverse team. So I'm very proud. We already have like six countries, uh, 20 languages represented on the team. And, you know, and for a lot of my employees, uh, you know, they I came out right after. I, I mean, I usually come out to them, you know, I, I mean, not that I carry the flag, but I usually will come out and, you know, in a, maybe in a very casual conversation, I'll let them know that I'm LGBT or something. And, you know, we have people from and we have international people on my team who, you know, I wasn't sure how they would take that. But it's actually gone really well. And, you know, a lot of my team is is millennials. And I think, you know, they don't even have an issue with it. So I, I think I'm very, very proud to have a company that respects all. And, and, you know, we have gender equality as well. Just before we go to the next question, I really want to congratulate you on being proactive in setting the culture up where you want to be inclusive and thinking about what that will take. And just the simple example of saying that you want to be a 50-50 organization where just thinking about gender equity, you know, in the workplace, in a tech environment, I think that's fantastic. So I, I want to congratulate you on that. And also touching on when you're coming out, I want you to take us back to a time where you may have had some hesitancy in coming out because you thought it would impact your business in a negative way. So this could be, you could be working with a client. You said that you you have staff from six different countries on your team. So just thinking about um, how being out in the workplace could impact morale. Can you give us a specific example of maybe a time where it was difficult to, to be your authentic self? And one, one way that you worked around that just to navigate truly being out and without apology. Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, I think I'll give you two examples. You know, as I mentioned before, you know, I was on Wall Street uh, before at Lehman Brothers. And I think, you know, in 90s coming out on Wall Street was something unheard of. And I think it really translated to my my uh, well-being and my unhappiness, if you will. And I think, you know, in, for someone to succeed both in personal and professional life, uh, you know, uh, you know, happiness is, is very important. You know, I, I wake up every morning and I ask myself a question, you know, am I happy doing what, I, what I'm doing today? And, and I'll say this, that, you know, uh, not being able to come out uh, with my first job was, uh, you know, for me personally, it was, uh, you know, it was a struggle. I think, you know, you know, there were times when we would have the holiday party at work or people would talk about their spouses and I just was, I just couldn't do that because I didn't think that the, my colleagues were ready for that. And as a result, you know, it automatically translates into, uh, you know, not being open uh, about things with your colleagues and friends. You know, you always feel like you're hiding something. And that really translates to unhappiness as well, you know, and, and I firmly believe, you know, if you're not happy, you can do your best at work and, and what you contribute. So I think that's one example where, uh, you know, I wish and of course, as I said, times have changed now. Um, so I think that's one example where, you know, I really struggled with uh, coming out and, and which is with completely, you know, it changed when I did my own with my first startup. Uh, so, you know, I started a company out of Babson, which focused we had built a mobile app where you can scan and bag and check out with your mobile phone directly, directly inside supermarkets and more. So that was the company that was uh, venture funded. I was a CTO and co-founder and, and, and we sold that company eventually. And I remember the first thing I did, you know, with my with my first startup was, you know, I had amazing mentors and investors. And the first thing I did was I wanted to make sure that there was no bias or prejudice uh, up front. And I made it very clear to my team and my investors and my mentors that I'm gay. And, you know, it was a very liberating experience because I never then had to ever lie to anyone uh, inside my company who I was and uh, and where I was going with my personal life. 
And I think how that's translated today in with viral is that, you know, I think, you know, when we said when we hire people on, on our team, uh, during the interview process itself, we set up the expectations that we're a company that really includes and welcomes everyone. And I have zero tolerance for racism, um, you know, any kind of gender prejudice, any kind of LGBT prejudice. And I actually say that very loud and clear that if you do, if you, if anything goes down that path, you're out of the company. And that's, so there's zero tolerance. And I think so setting that expectation up front in hiring uh, sets, sets you also up for getting the right candidate on board on your company, on, on your team. So I think I think sharing those values and making those values uh, set in stone is very important as, as a founder and setting the right culture. So I think I would say those are the two examples where I struggled and then I came out and I made something good out of it. Yeah. And, and my follow up question to that would be, you know, just if you could share a time where you successfully leveraged being gay to benefit your business. And I think you, you shared one great example of, you know, just setting your expectations up front and attracting the right people into your business. Could you think of another example of how, whether it's the freedom of just being yourself and people knowing who you are, knowing about your family, if that's, you know, just allows you to be more productive, productive, or if you can just kind of share one other example of how being authentically out has, has really helped your business thrive. I think that would be very helpful for our listeners to hear that as well. Well, first of all, I want to just give a shout out to uh, Start Out. I think they've been so amazing and so helpful for me. You know, they've introduced me to mentors, uh, investors, and, you know, they're really making a genuine effort to help uh, LGBT entrepreneurs. So I think I think that what LGBT has done for me is that, you know, it's actually put me out there as a, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very proud that, you know, I can I can go out in the world now and say that, you know, we're an, uh, we're an LGBT company. We're, we're very accepted uh, by our peers and by the industry. And also, you know, it's a way for my company to stand out, uh, you know, in Silicon Valley as well. You know, there is, as I mentioned before, uh, you know, there's a lot of talk, but less execution. So, uh, you know, having, you know, it all, I mean, to be honest, you know, uh, uh, an employee and employer relationship is just like a parent and child relationship. So your employees actually take all the value system from your employer or your boss. So I think having that expectation up at the very high level, which is at the CEO level, at the founder level, that you know we will accept peoples of all kinds, uh, you know, sets us apart in Silicon Valley than everyone else. I mean, I think uh, I'll tell you this: that I've had a number of investor doors open uh, because they heard about us that we're very uh, diverse, diversity friendly. And we're also LGBT friendly as well. And, and so I've, I can tell you that that a number of investors have em, openly embraced us. And, and I'm sure, you know, it's also the case now with that. We're also finding that with some of the customers, you know, we're just getting ready to launch some big customers. And I think on the customer front as well, you know, a lot of these big brands that we, and retailers that we want to work with, you know, they're also very open to embracing diversity as well. And they want to show their cost consumers that, you know, it's a, they're, they're also they work with suppliers. Uh, yeah, you know, that have diverse backgrounds and, and, and bring more. So I think I think it translates to, to be honest with you, uh, you know, good business for our customers. And it also uh, means good business for us, for my company, Viral, as well. Yeah, and thank you for sharing that. You've provided some examples of some of the ups and downs of being an out boss. If there's one thing that you could share for our listeners, if you really wanted them to hone on one aspect of being out in the workplace, what is that thing that you would want them to take away from this part of our conversation to inspire them to bring their whole selves to work? Sure. So I think, I think first of all, in life, and this is both, you know, whether you're LGBT or not, I think you need to own your narrative of your story. Uh, you know, one thing I did when I came out was I made sure that no one else owned my narrative and I never uh, apologized for being gay. Uh, neither, was, neither was I sorry. I was very proud. In fact, I remember coming out to my parents uh, and I said, Mom, I'm very gifted to be gay. <laughs> and you're very lucky to have a son who is, who is gifted, right? And I think that was really embraced well by my, uh, uh, by my family and also my friends and, and as well. So uh, I would say, you know, you know never... Never uh, give, uh, never let someone else own your story. And and when I what I mean by that is, you know, be authentic, be honest. Uh, I think you know you'd rather be honest in the long term than than say some bullshit or lie. Mm -hmm. uh, so sometimes it might it might take time to get there. Uh, so take your time if you need to. But when you do get there, you know, make sure it's your story and it's your narrative, and and never let anyone else control it. 
and yeah. do never be apolog- ap- apologetic for it. I love that. Own your narrative and never apologize for who you are. And I think that is a great place to pause as we go to our sponsorship break. But for our listeners, please don't go anywhere because when we return, we're going to jump into our bonus round. HR and diversity professionals, are you struggling with engaging LGBTQ talent? Do you stay awake at night worrying about limiting litigation risks? Have you considered seeking support around these concerns, but just aren't sure where to turn? Look no further. Rhodes Perry Consulting offers you solutions with the Engaging LGBTQ Talent A to Z Certification. This proven four-week mentorship program delivers skills, offers support, and connects you with other professionals committed to transforming themselves and their workplaces. Learn more about this cutting-edge program by visiting RhodesPerry.com and use the promo code RPC for a 10% discount. Take action and visit RhodesPerry.com. Welcome back, Outbosses. We are now going into our bonus round where we'll have the chance to get to know Ajay just a little bit better, gain some insights on how we can bring our authentic selves to work, and then we're going to learn one way to stay in touch with Ajay after today's conversation. So Ajay, are you ready for some quick fire questions? I am ready. Okay, I love that. Okay, so first question for you. Did your LGBTQ identity hold you back from taking the entrepreneurial leap or did it speed up the process? Uh, It actually speeded up the process. And in one sentence, what does it mean to bring your whole self to work? It's really being uh, authentic about who I am and translating that into work culture as well uh, with my team. What's one personal habit that helps you master yourself and your business? I would say listening to my team, to my customers, and really building um, uh, listening skills. You know, I have a diverse team, and so I think it's very important when you have a diverse team, you know, it it takes time, and you, you build tremendous listening skills. So that's one advantage of having uh, diverse teams is, is uh, you, you build your listening skills. I love that. You know, the idea of listening, learning from who you're listening from, and then, and then leading. So great, great example. You know, what I do is every week I meet, I meet a new person for breakfast or for coffee. And I've been doing that for about 10 years now. And the reason I do that is that new person might be in my industry or it could be someone who wants me to mentor him or her. Uh, or it could be someone who is better than me, you know, someone with senior with more experience. And I think I've done that for like 10 years now um, because, you know, it's very important to bring d- different perspectives in your life. And every time I meet a new person, I learn something new that I didn't know before. So I think what's very important is curiosity. And I extend that curiosity to both my business and my life by meeting one new person a week. That's so smart, the idea of social networking. And it reminds me of the book, Never Eat Alone. So for yeah. listeners, definitely check that one out because it, it, I think that builds off of what Ajay is sharing here right now. So name one thing that you readily delegate in your business to stay focused on what you're good at. I would say one thing I'm, I'm really good at is giving people, uh, uh, challenging people with uh, higher responsibilities. So what I found that even people who might not have an experience and if you give, if you delegate and if you give them a challenge, uh, you know, you'd be amazed how uh, they will exceed. Uh, and I've been surprised with my own colleagues. You know, I have a lot of uh, uh, junior people just out of school in my company. Uh, and it's amazing. You know, what they, what they always tell me and what they love about being at Viral is that I've never treated them as interns. Like I, they, they don't do copy and all that stuff. Uh, what they really do is uh, do higher tasks uh, and do tasks that need critical thinking. So I think uh, I've, I've always been surprised myself with uh, challenging people with new things and, and, and also surprised how well they deliver. So, so smart. Giving people, especially younger staff, those stretch opportunities and really mentoring uh, those, those folks along the way because at some point they're going to be leading key aspects of your, of your business. So thank you for doing that. So we're running short on time, so we're going to go to um, our last two questions. And for this la- or for the second to last question, can you please share one piece of advice to inspire the next generation of outbosses to take that first entrepreneurial leap? I would say, you know, make sure you focus on a deep problem that you want to solve. Uh, that problem that you might want to solve might come from your personal experience or perhaps something that you have seen or learned in the industry. And I would also challenge you that, 
you know, in order to solve the problem, you don't necessarily need the need necessarily a background or industry experience in that area. I think you know we have seen again and again that uh, that people who solve big problems come from the outside. Um, so don't be shy or coy about about doing something that you don't know. I think I think if you have the passion and the persistence, uh, I'm pretty sure you can you can execute. But importantly, focus on a deeper problem um, that you that, that that everyone cares about, and for which you know if you want to start a for for profit, for profit business, uh, make sure someone wants to pay for that problem as well. Such good advice. So, Ajay, thank you so much for your time and for inspiring fellow outbosses. Before we go, can you please share one way we can stay in touch with you and learn more about your business? Sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, I tweet uh, at my personal uh, Twitter account. It's at A as in Alpha, J as in Joy, uh, B as in Boy, A as in Alpha, again, M as in Mary. So it's at AJ Bam, uh, five letters. Uh, and you can also reach me on my LinkedIn. So if you just type my name, uh, you can connect with me on LinkedIn and, and uh, put a, a word saying you heard me on the podcast um, here with Rhodes. And I'll be happy to connect with you. And, and of course, you know, you'll see my email address, uh, but also I will get to know you through your LinkedIn profile as well. That's great. Thank you so much. And for Outbosses, thank you for tuning into this week's episode. It is always my pleasure to connect with you and so many inspiring Outbosses like Ajay. As a next step, check out the show notes for highlights from today's conversation and consider leaving a rating and review in iTunes. For now, keep being your authentic selves 100% of the time.